skin hardeners or are they skin thickeners? And there is a difference. Today we're going over the question, is it safe to microneedle radius or Sculptra into the skin? Let's get into it. medical aesthetics provider and this is your jam, consider joining my Patreon where it's designed for serious medical aesthetics providers just like you. So if this is the first time you've ever heard of Radius or Sculpture, I'll just break it down simply. These are two injectable products that work slightly differently, but in the end, they're designed for your body to stimulate and make collagen around the products. As a result, you end up building slowly a little bit of volume and you have pretty much full control of how much volume you want until you have your desired goals and the collagen that's made there representing the volume that you want lasts for about two years. Now, you can also take this product and we see it all the time where medical aesthetics providers will place it on the skin topically and they will microneedle it into the skin. And the result is hoping to stimulate collagen in the skin and regenerate the collagen that was lost, creating youth. Now, is that true? So to better understand this, let's just go down a little bit deeper with what is happening with Radius and Sculptra. So these two products are very cool, they're unique. They're biostimulators, which means that whenever you place these products into the body, your body's going to have kind of like a foreign body reaction towards it. And as a result, it ends up stimulating collagen around the product. Radius works a little differently, but it's very similar. And then in the end, what happens is your body creates this volume. It's your body creating the collagen that creates volume to the desired areas. Typically, we place it in the cheeks, nasal labial folds, and marionettes. But recently, what we're seeing is our medical aesthetics providers microneedle it into the skin directly, hoping that we create this type one and three collagen directly into the skin. Now, if I say that, you might think, that's perfect, that's such a genius idea. Why don't we all do this? Well, for a couple reasons. And this is where people kind of get confused or misled or maybe just not aware about biostimulators. There are two different groups. You have one group which is designed to stimulate collagen and not provide any additional volume. You're just literally waking up the cells responsible for making the collagen and making them work better. And then the second group is going to be an injectable that's going to stimulate an inflammatory response. And as a result, it's going to create collagen and that collagen is going to overreplicate. And as a result, you end up getting volume. So you have volumizing biostimulators and non-volumizing biostimulators. And everyone's kind of grouping them all together and they're really not, they are separate. So now that we understand that theory, I feel that the biostimulators that create volume are best to be placed in those fat pads that are designed to grow and shrink. It's safe there. If you're trying to cram that stuff into tight areas such as the skin, well, first of all, the type one and type three collagen that's being induced from these products are not quite the same as the type one and type three collagen that we have in our skin. You're not going to make baby skin from this product. What it's going to do is actually create an inflammatory response that does create collagen. It is still type one and three, but the percentiles are slightly different. And we really don't know what the difference is. We just know that it's slightly different. And as a result, it might change the texture of the skin slightly. At the same time, if you're cramming it in the skin, then it potentially can create an inflammatory response in an area that doesn't have room to grow. And if that happens, that's when you have risks of granulomas, scar tissue, and other just weird things that are unanticipated that you're going to potentially have issues with. Now, this is just a theory of mine. There's no real evidence about it. Now, regardless, Sculpture and Radius are not designed to be microneedled into the skin. These are off-label procedures that we see. I'm just giving my perspective on it, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Thanks, everyone. So until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers, guys. Thank you.